Hello and welcome to Beach Beds and Browns. I'm Joe Skibby. I'm excited here to have Constant L. Burtz with us today. Yeah. Emerging artist from the Northwest Indiana Chicagoland region, which we focus on. And uh, today we're going to be covering everything from birth to life to legacy and uh, everything in between. So uh, with that, I'm going to introduce Constant L. Burtz and uh, just start launching into questions. Does that sound good with you? Uh, well, y'all know what it is. Your boy CLB, Constant L. Burtz from the Windy City. Uh, you know, shout out to, to Nap2. Nap Town's also my stuff and ground, but uh, Windy City, where it's at. I'm happy to be here, man. Nice, and we're happy to have you. We're uh, originally from Illinois and transplants to Northwest Indiana, so we're good to see we're just like a suburb of Chicago. Yeah, right? man. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's jump right into it. Talk about life and family. Tell me, you know, you're from uh, from Chicago. You know, tell me where. Uh, originally from uh, 35th and Cottage Grove. Uh, call it the low end. Um, back in Chicago, um, as I got a little older, um, my mom moved over over like off uh, 87th and State, like kind of by the Dan Ryan. So um, between. The low end of 35th of College Girl over 87 is pretty much where, uh, you know, I grew up on. Uh, obviously, a lot of friends and people I did music with, most of them stayed in Inglewood. So I was in Inglewood a lot, okay. too. So, you know, other than that, I was just any typical city kid, you know, yeah. trying to make it out. So. Tell me, so I'm trying to make it out. That's what we're going to touch on a little bit is talk to me about your community. Um, things that you saw growing up, things that uh, were opportunities to be beneficial to the community, things that were troublesome in the community, and just yeah. tell me a little bit about you and your history. You know, my my mom, she, uh, as I'm older now, you know, I can honestly say she did uh, a solid job, you know what I'm saying, trying to keep me and my sister in a neighborhood, you know, a good neighborhood, the best of her ability, but you know, it's sure. Chicago. So, Shout out to the single moms out yeah, there. I was know, raised by a single mom uh, too, and strong and proud, you bet. Man, she, she, she made life, as you get older, you realize, you, you know, you were struggling a little bit, but you don't realize that until you get older. You know, being young, my mom but never you're normal, made it you're seem, normal. Yeah, yeah, she never made it seem like, you know, we were struggling, we still did everything. You know, other kids, they're like, we went on trips, like, you know, like to Disney World and, you know, stuff like that. And, um, but, you know, as you, you never understood, you know, what your parents went through, what they had to do, you know what I'm saying, to provide that lifestyle. So, you know, she did do our best to try to, you know, keep us in a, a safe environment. But, you know, the Chicago, it is what it is in the streets. It is what it is. Um, my dad, he stayed like two hours away and ran to Illinois. Um, and, and not saying that he wasn't, you know, active, you know, is that I didn't get those opportunities to see him like every day, like, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So a lot of things, you know, I, I went through coming up as a kid, you know, as a man, um, you know, there's some things that I really had to learn on my own, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the surrounding, I always don't, didn't always have the, uh, the best influence according to the camera eye. You know, yeah. but it was the role models that I had. Like you some, know. <laughs> some people show you how not to live. Exactly. Right? And if you can be exactly. in the moment and learn that lesson, that's just as powerful as somebody showing yeah, exactly. you the right way to live. Yeah. You uh, know, you know. So between that and you know, also going out to visit my dad, you know, like on vacations and you know holidays and things like that. Um, I did stay out there with him at one point. That wasn't until I got a little older. Um, but you know, Chicago. I mean, I I did where. Well, most typical young man at that time went through. Sure. You know, I, I had my fun. I, I did some dumb stuff. You know, and I learned some lessons. So before yeah. social media was around, before right? Before social media was around, <laughs> right? No doubt. Uh, yeah. Um, what about? Uh, so you said you visited, spent some time in Rantoul. Rantoul is a little bit more of a rural community. Is that correct? Yeah. It's like uh, nobody would never really know where it's at. Um, it's like 15 minutes away from Champagne. Yeah. So a lot of people, I'm like Rantoul, and they'd be like, "Huh?" I'm like, "You know where Champagne is?" They're <laughs> yeah. like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. You probably passed right through it. Didn't even there. know. Yeah. Don't even know it. Um, so as you know, you know Rantoul, old uh, military base. Yeah. Um, now that living out there was unique because I'm literally going from the hood to, like I said, a rural area of this country. I'm seeing stuff I never saw 
in front of me with all our like tractors and like yeah. farms and like was it a, a did you have friends that connected you to that warmly or was it a big obstacle to have an understanding of that and it was just kind of stayed on the outside peripheral of it it was rough in the beginning I moved out there it was the first time I ever experienced uh, racism um, like ever um, my life especially that up close so um and at the time, you know, as I got older, you know, ran to, you know, it was getting a little more diverse. But at the time, like when I was at that age, it, you know, it wasn't as diverse, you know, as it is now. Uh, so when you coming from the hood, where well, your most your your problem really is just police, gangs, you know, what I'm saying drugs, and not saying this in a bragging way, but you know that was that was a norm. That was something sure. I was comfortable with. Like you know, somebody laying down on the streets from getting popped, you know what I'm saying, or seeing the whole fight bra break out, that was my norm. Now coming out here, you know, coming to Rand Tool, right. where it's just like, okay, you have new set of problems, but it's not, you know, what you're used to. You know, walking through the hood, danger zones, I'm comfortable with that. But like going out there and then you see a racism stuff you only seen on TV, like right in front of you, you don't know how to react. It's like, oh, 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 okay, well. <laughs> yeah, now what? So, like, right, so now what? Uh, you know, in, in the hood, we handle a situation this, but, you know, those type of situations, I ain't know how to handle. And then you also have to be smart. Like, you know, it's. And what age bracket was this? Was it like junior high, high school, or before uh, that? I wouldn't say it's going into like my freshman year. So now, like, there aren't any other social problems going on at that time, you know. Right. Hormones be kicking, getting girls and interested in girls and you know sports and everything else. And, man. But, but, like, any other place, you know, it's you learn to adapt, you know. There's no, I'm beyond, I, in, my, in my opinion, there's no safe zone anywhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't care how how much money you have, you know, whether you're rich, you poor. It's danger everywhere. So, it. it Living that diverse lifestyle taught me not to underestimate any environment, anyone, any situation, no whatsoever. Sure. I mean, you gotta you gotta assimilate no right. matter where you're at, right? right? And uh, there's gonna be areas that are safer based on internal and external factors than others. And um, you know, it's it's never good when you have to go through those things. But no, it not doesn't kill you; it makes you stronger. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah every scar, every scar is a blessing. Yeah, I yeah, like that. Further. I like that. I'm gonna use <laughs> that, man. When did you end up coming back to the sh- Chicago? Uh, literally right after I graduated, um, you know, my I, I had one of those dads where you know, my dad he's he's just he was always focused. That's one thing I always learned from him. You know, saying stay focused, whatever you want to do, I don't care what it is that you do, just be the best at it. Don't half ass it. Nice. You know, and, and that was my father. So you know, when I graduated, you know, and he knew at that time my drive for music was really kicking in like at, at this point like i'm i'm in so tune with myself you fostered like, that through high school yeah and ran tool and still yeah. stay in touch well, and, go back and forth to and chicago? literally it, it, i mean honestly it started back in chicago before you get to rent tool because i was one of those young kids in chicago that was getting off for of battle rapping so that's how I started off. You know, I didn't know how to write songs. I didn't know anything about studio etiquette. You just off the tip. And you know, uh, I got on just by straight up humiliating you. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, you take an angry kid from the hood and he got all this aggression in him. And I found something where I could let that out. And it didn't you know, involve me having to go to jail doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and. I, I used to do it for fun, like, you know what I'm saying, with a lot of, you know what I'm saying, friends I had around that time. But then, you know, when it started getting serious, you know, when people started like, hey, you know, start talking about you, things like that. And then I discovered the money side of it. And I'm like, man, it's like drug money, you know what I'm saying? I go up here and and uh, battle this dude for X amount of money and I, I make bands in, what, like 30 minutes at the most? So. Yeah. It, it became real addictive and you know uh, so that's where it really started at uh, so it, fill me in a little bit on that and uh, definitely share with our viewers you know I'm I'm a hip hop fan I know the studio I know the tapes and CDs yeah. I know a couple concerts I've never been in a battle rap scenario I imagine that is intense and there's a threat of violence just waiting to be sparked oh man yeah cut <laughs> Man, what you say could trigger somebody. It, it, was, it was always some violence. Sure, there's always that. an off-topic subject, and you um, hit that button, and it's yeah. Out, I mean, every, I feel like every every rapper that was like really 
into it, like the battle rap, they experienced some type of violence um, at some point. I remember, I remember getting my first, you know what I'm saying, sucker punch, you know what I'm saying, in the middle you know, yeah. of a rap battle. And, but at the same time, that was me though. Like I, that pain, like that anger, that violence, like I enjoyed that. To, to me, that was, to me, in a weird way, it's an accomplishment. It's like, man, I got under your skin that bad? You ready to throw hands? Yeah. Or you ready to draw your gun? I'm like, oof, that's why I realized I was good. I was like, man, I, words are really powerful. Like, this is the, the, the toughest dude in the hood walking around, and I just made this man whole character fold with words. And that's when I realized how powerful, you know what I'm saying, yeah. what I was doing. So, you know, with that being said, I started changing my mindset, like, you know what I'm saying, how I look at things. Uh, met DJ Showtime, uh, one of the biggest DJs in Chicago. Um, he met me and he kind of just, he got me. You know, he brought me into the studio first time. Yeah. He showed me how to write songs. He's like, I know you can rap, but can you write a hit record? And I'm like, man, fuck a hit record, boy. <laughs> I'm out here eating everybody up. What right. you talking about? Man? I want the bands yeah. in 30 seconds. Yeah, man. you know, like broke man mentality. He's like, yeah, that's cool and Got all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's cool and all, if you want to be famous on this side, of, uh, this side of Chicago, we're like, but this side don't know you, this side don't know you, this state don't know you. Hell, or it's, or it's few people on the streets that show don't yeah. know you. So, you know what I'm saying, he humbled me real quick. Um, and I would have never thought like, you know what I'm saying, starting writing songs and open up my mind, listen to other different types of songs besides just hip hop and things like that, that I was going to develop this addiction. You know what I'm saying? And to the point I would stop battle rapping. Like, a lot of people ask me now, would I still do it? And it's, it'll be kind of hard because that drive I used to have for it is, you know, no longer there. Um, well, it's a I, different I, skill set. The yeah. aggression you needed to be successful there has to be toned down to be yeah, successful in a studio exactly. or in a performance. You can't be, you can't serve all masters. You got to pick which path you're going to take. Yeah. And, and I, be, I like became that. much of a softy now. Like, you know, back then I was young, high headed. You know, so, you know, it, it was just a lot of anger. So, you know, battle rapping was, was perfect for me. As a grown man now, you know what I'm saying? As a father, like the idea of using my energy to do that is, it's not even exciting to me no more. To bring right? someone else down. Yeah, you, you know, know rather, and then don't get me wrong, like at the end of the day, everybody who battle rap, they understand it's nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? You, Man, you'll literally just get done, talk about this dude, dead mama. And you knew his mama. She fed you and everything. But hey, bro, when we when it's face to face and there's money on the line, we not friends no more. Yeah. All that is out the window. You know what you signed up for. And so with that mentality being said, we all knew what we was getting ourselves into. And you know, nine times out of ten, it was a hug. You know what I'm saying? After it's like, yo, we good, we straight. But or sometimes it was like we said earlier, just like a UFC fighter, a whole fighter, fighter breakout. Yeah, somebody. Just, this is about the skill. Now, <laughs> exactly. This so is about going back to the gym. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was something that I you know I definitely uh, enjoyed doing at the time. But I'm be honest, honest, I don't think I could like fully get back into it. Big deals, big risks, big meals. Niggas say, beat the sun, stay still. Get the bag. So you mentioned uh, fatherhood. Yeah. Uh, how old is your son? And uh, talk to me a little bit about how fatherhood has changed your game. Uh, man, he's six. Um, and I was definitely I was one of those individuals where I wasn't like, oh, I want kids and you know things like that. I wasn't against having any, but you know, saying nor did I ever show interest. You were waiting for the quote unquote right that. time, right? I'm waiting, waiting for the right time. I was just living life. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, kids wasn't even a thought process in my life, in my head, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, the young lady I met um, and fell in love with, because at least I could say, you know, it's, you know, granted we're not together, but it wasn't a fling type thing. You know, it was someone I was. You know, actually in love with at the time, you know, thought we were engaged, you know, you know I, I wasn't planning on starting over, that wasn't a game for it. Uh, however, um, I still remember when she uh, gave me a phone call, dog, I was working at uh, Crown Plaza Hotel uh, Union Station Okay. in Indianapolis. Uh, my boss at the time, uh, Jordan Armstrong, uh, I was working the front desk, I was the front desk agent. Yeah. Um, and he came from the back, he said, hey, you, you got a phone call, you know, it's, 
uh, your fiance. I said, okay, you know, I don't think something's wrong. And I'm at work, it's sold out. We're stressed, sure. we, we're being yelled at, we're being cussed at. Right time for, for you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, then here I am, my discombobulated, I get on the phone, I'm like, hey, she's like, she just rips the Band-Aid off, mm -hmm. like, you know, not how's work doing, and she goes, I'm pregnant, then next thing you know, I wake up to my boss doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really pass out? I, was, I, 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 as, I got a little bit of wah, 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 as I got told cliche too. <laughs> as it sounds, as cliche as it sounds, I was out, I was, it was just like, my knees just buckled. It's a big deal. Yeah, my head, I was like, what'd she just say? <laughs> like, oh no, like, yeah. and then I had to go out there to a sold out hotel. You put your work face and, back on. And put my work face back on, knowing I just heard that I'm gonna be a kid with just whole life flashed in front of me. So it was like, sheesh. But uh, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade anything for the world, man. Like, he, he's definitely made me a better person, uh, made me more humble. Uh, more importantly, made me discipline myself, you know, hold myself accountable uh, to a lot more, which, to be honest, that was something that I struggled with before I came to father, you know. Um, I, I can't say I was, uh, it's everybody's fault, not my fault. It was more just the, I did what I did, I don't care, no remorse, right. no type of feeling, no whatsoever. Then you get this kid and all of a sudden he, he or she taps different side emotions in you and now you go do something that you, no, I do. You said think about it. You be like, ah, oh, that was kind of fucked up. I shouldn't have did that. Sure. Like, <laughs> what's he gonna? What's little man gonna? Like, what little man go do? It? Like, how I respond if I saw him do this? So you know, it in that way, he, he definitely definitely made me grow up mentally, um, becoming a father. In the long way video, you're playing some games with your son. What system is that, and what uh, what game? Oh you no, playing? that was um. And I'm assuming that was your son. No, yeah. that was actually uh, not my son. That was actually uh, my nephew. Okay. Uh, my nephew Daniel. Um, I uh, always wanted to, you know, go back home and just do something like with the family. And it it's so funny because uh, me and uh, uh, my, my close friend, my videographer, uh, video about this. Um, he, uh, Shout out to Dez, yeah. <laughs> we were uh, sitting there talking, and you know, Dez, he has, a lot of times when we approach these videos, you know, his, his mindset is more like movie and, you know. The more theatrical you know, things like yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, with this one, with Long Way, it, it gave me, it just gave me, I'm, I'm not gonna fabricate, it gave me that, that Chicago summertime vibe when I was working on the song. All the thing I saw was, being back in the hood, being back with the family, you know what I'm saying, just having a good time. So it was like one of those videos where we didn't do a lot when it came to the storyboard for this one, and it ended up turning out exactly, you know, how we both wanted to be. And I think just because simply I had my family there. Uh, you know, that was my sister in the end of the video, okay. kicking us out. Um, and I was like having my nephew, like everyone you saw in there was just literally my family. So nice. that's what made that video more fun and special. I feel that in watching it, it just yeah. comes across natural. None of it's forced, none of it's- Yeah, natural. exactly. It like everything you saw in that video was every day. Like that was not scripted. It wasn't, hey, you know what I'm saying? Even at the end was, you know, probably been the most, you know, scripted that we did for that video. But even still, that's normal. Me partying at my sister house, yeah. you know, with the fellas, and she coming in and kicking us out. That's normal. Like, <laughs> yeah, and is that a regular occurrence? You get back with the old guys, you connect at mom's house. You, you yeah, as much as, as much as I can. Right. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't get to as lot as I want to. Um, a lot of times, I'm it's a come and go. You know, I'm booked for a show or you know, whatever else I got to do, and I I got to get on to the next. You know, where else I got scheduled. But for the most part, if I do got time, yeah. I'm, some of them. Uh, well, yeah. sure. <laughs> I find the older we get and the less we're at moms or the less we're hanging out with yeah. friends is those those times when they come together, they're just magical. Yeah. Like, it takes you back 15 it years you back, and man. everything feels right again. Yeah. It, and uh, whatever's bothering you, whatever's troubling you at work or at home, it's it a just good melts way to, away. to tap back into your roots. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of remember who you are, where you came from. Yeah. So it's... Um, I, I, I tell people all the time, like, yeah, we got dreams and you know we got ambition we got a lot of things we want to accomplish and the one thing i realized so far is that i really been taking time for granted when it comes to spending time with family um things like that and you know especially now when everything's been new up and on the rise and i got so many 
expectations right now at the moment. So I have those days where I just like, man, I just want to kick it with my dukes. You know what I'm saying? Eat some soul food and irritate her for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I want to go bug my sis. You know, yeah. you know, I want to just tie my phone out, sit with my son, and not absolutely do nothing. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of a lot of things I'm experiencing now. I realize how much I've been taking for granted when it comes to that subject. So I've been trying to get better about that. Well, and not you know trying to hustle to grow the performer thing, be an entertainer. Yeah. That's traveling. That's nights nice away. Like you got to cherish every moment. Man. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, you. Uh, it's like a uh, 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 Don Ski said. You know, it's you. This is the part where you enter in where your life is everyone's entertainment, and you know, it's, I chose it. You know, what I'm saying I asked for it, and now that it's here, it's. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it's got to be natural. You're with it, too right? far to turn back now, <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> sheesh. <laughs> Uh, so while we're on the long way video, you know, uh, you mentioned a little bit how the inspiration for that video was the Chicago streets, summertime, family. Uh, tell me about, you know, the long way that it's been for you. And we've heard some of that history, but mm -hmm. that came out in that song and what that song uh, means to you and to your family. It means, I mean, it, it really, you know, it, it, it really was just about, you know what I'm saying, tacking back a, a part of a memory. Um, you know what I'm saying that just made me feel whole again um, you know everybody I, th I think most people's favorite line of that song is um, when I go uh, trust my trust my fucking word it go a long way that's my nigga man I fuck with even when I perform it at the shows it's like everybody get it everybody had those friends that they grew up with because you know as we all know you can start off with a group of people today 10 years down the line you might only have two, three, maybe one of those people out there, whole crew. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I think that line touched me and everybody else because everyone has that one friend where it's like, man, we've been through decades though with each other. Like, we experienced every level of friendship from money uh, to, to uh, relationships, whether it's friendships or, you know, personal relationships and things like that. Been tested on all types of levels. Um, you know, especially like my buddies, uh, uh, my homie Smitty, my right hand man, uh, who's actually managed. And I say, I experienced every level, you know what I'm saying, with him from like, you know, big money to no money. Uh, both being engaged and having our significant other not liking, you know, okay. like experience all that. So, you know what I'm saying, that's, that, that song was more just, Long Way was really just for that one time, like you said, when all your buddies and family get together, you ain't worried about all that sad crap that you're going through. Right. Everybody pouring up, everybody drinking, smoking, just having a good time, laughing and smiling. And then, you know, that's what Long Way was about for me. It was just having a good time. <laughs> Performing obviously as an entertainer is, is something you're doing all the time. What does it feel like when you're performing, when you're constant Alberts, when you're on the stage, when you're in the studio, when you're being interviewed? Man, it feels like drugs. Like it feels like you get that endorphin rush. It feels like drugs. Like you know, um, and so I listen. I'm like, oh, how you know it feel like drugs? He do drugs. Yeah, yeah. I, I lived a little. <laughs> You know, I experienced some things. And it's that, legal in Illinois. Yeah, Get off his and, back. And that's, <laughs> that shit feels like drugs. Like Just the recognition just the, and the affinity and the warmth coming from it? Or? I, it's really just the energy, man. I mean, from my, you got to think from our perspective. Like, when, most of the times when we write these songs, like, we and we cooped up in some basement or we in the room or rather we in the studio. But we writing, you know, from here, you know what I'm saying, and from here. So to actually lay that down, what you was feeling, and to play it and see a crowd of people do the same reaction as when you was writing it, that's the best feeling in the world. Nice. It's, just, it's like I get a rush, you know, I had these moments where I'm looking there in the crowd and I'm just, you know, feeding off their energy. And this times, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna see somebody, they giving me this look and I'm just like, yeah, you feel this shit? I'm killing it, ain't not. They're like, yeah, you fucking this shit up. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking this shit up. Yeah. So it's like, it's, 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 it's that, that tense that you get just knowing like, you know what I'm saying, from, from human being to human being, like without even talking, you can feel this same message. 
Like and, and that's what I love about performing. I think that's what I love about music at all. Get them moving, get them out their seats, yeah. get them clapping. Yeah, clapping. Yeah, it's like I mean, who doesn't like? The first time any artist probably told the crowd to do this and they did it, they <laughs> probably lost their mind like right. I did. It was just like, oh, I got these superpowers. It's like, all right, let me do it again. All right, do this. And, you know, so it's just like, it's, it's, it's fun, man, to, to take what's, you know what I'm saying, trapped up here and to finally let it out and to see other people's reaction in a positive way is the best feeling in the world. So, and that's got to be a multi step prize where you just getting it out of your head on paper has got to feel amazing. Exactly. Then yeah. hitting the studio, recording it in the environment that you're going in, and then hearing it for the first time, how it came out in your head, and then performing. So, I mean, that's. All types of level of excitement. So, yeah. it's like, it's, 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 it's different types of excitement. Like, there's times where I'm like, man, I'm excited to work on this song. There's times I'm like, damn, I'm excited to actually record this song. There's times when I'm like, before I even done writing a song, I got like a hook and maybe half of the verse, but I'm already five steps ahead. And I'm like, I need finish and I can't wait to perform this. This is gonna be crazy. Like, all right, like, can you finish the song first? Like, okay, yeah, I forgot. But, uh, <laughs> but it, second verse. Yeah, it get like that, man. Like you, it, that if you like again, if you really love it, man, like you, you feel it every part of it. You know what I'm saying from writing it to actual, like actually performing it. You're gonna feel every part of that energy. And uh, I think everybody gets nervous. As a performer, I assume you don't have stage fright, but is there a time where you had to overcome being comfortable on the stage or a time that was particularly uh, queasy in your gut? I ain't gonna even sit here and flex. Like, I still don't get those nerves. Um, I would say stepping on stage it's the part, you know what I'm saying, that's nervous, but a lot of times for me, it's where I'm at and who's there um, type of thing. Um, I, I, I Honestly, I, I think all artists still, no matter how big they get, you know, whether they hitting, you know, rock star status, you know, whether they, where I'm at, um, still fully trying to, you know what I'm saying, kick down the doors and get that foot in, I think nerves is always going to be there. It just, you know, well, what's causing those nerves, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, hopping on stage, obviously, and pe performing in front of you know people is, is it's not a nerve thing for me um, anymore. But a lot of times, if I find out certain individuals is there, you know, what I'm saying like good opportunity, yeah, I feel those nerves. Like sure. yeah, it'll kick the in. scouts in the crowd. Yeah, it'll kick it in. Yeah. Like oh shit, it's like uh, who there? <laughs> and I gotta talk myself out of it. It's like hey, bro, he put his draws on one leg at a time, just yeah, like right. you. He's like all right, you right, you right, <laughs> like you right. <laughs> I want to talk, change topics a little bit and talk about success and your definition of success and everybody everybody always references the, the overnight success and really there is no overnight success, right? No. But you, you uh, put in the work over time and maybe there's a tipping point to that success where exactly. you hit mass. But uh, what, is, what does success look like for Constant Alberts in the coming months, in the coming years? If you ask me right now, at the at the rate I'm going, I, I'm I'm already successful, and I'm be honest. Uh, it was at one point I remember me and uh, my cousin Smitty was uh, sitting on the couch. We had got an apartment together, our first apartment. Man, we was poor as fuck, poor. Like stove didn't work, didn't have a working refrigerator. All we had was a uh, uh, a fryer, a deep fryer, okay. and, uh, a microwave. We pretty much survived off that. No AC, no heat. Like not over exaggerating, and um, I remember we went and got this ugly, this little ugly ass couch, just flowers on it. It was like tan, one of those old grandma couch, and we were sitting there, and um, and I looked at her, and I said, I said, bro, I said, you know what? I said, the next five years, I bet we're gonna wake up, nice crib, we we'll have a studio in the crib. We ain't gotta go nowhere. We're gonna. Engineer, we're gonna have videographers, you know, we're gonna have a whole traveling team. And then I probably went there like six years, man, he was hanging out in our new spot, um, sitting in a gym that we created. Um, turned the whole garage into a gym and created. And we were sitting there drinking, and I was like, man, I said, remember I told you we was gonna wake up? <laughs> and you did it? Yeah, hey, you know, you just thought, but even at that time it hit me, I was like, man, like what I manifest is real. Like, if if, if, if I manifest, if I believe in it and, and, and I trust in it, obviously I'm gonna have to 
my action is going to have to match, you know what I'm saying, my energy that I'm projecting, but it's going to happen. So, you know, if you ask me right now, yeah, I'm successful. You know, I'm, I got everything that I said I was going to do and, you know, I'm going to continue to be more successful. Now, I have other goals, you know what I'm saying, other things to play that I want to reach. And it's, it's the same way. You manifest, you discipline yourself, you uh, set small goals to meet those big goals and you repeat it. So talk a little bit about the fan and how they find music differently and how you're out on so many different channels in order for them to find you. Um, what type of active push are you given to introduce yourself to new fans? And uh, Other than guesting on uh, Beast Beds and Browns? Right. Uh, 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 word. I mean, I use every platform that... You know, most entertainers, you know, use today, you know, your, you know, you got your Instagram, your Twitter, your social media. I don't think there's ever, I don't think I have one that I just invest in. You know, everyone, everyone has their, their, their taste. If I can go a little bit into who we're trying to appeal to, um, obviously the hip hop community, wide range. Uh, I think it was, uh, maybe three or four years back at Thalia Hall. It was the first time I was at a hip hop concert. It was uh, Tokyo, Joey Perp, um, Chance, and a bunch of his guys came out. I know out Tokyo, I know, I, know, I, know, I know about Tokyo and Chance. Um, and it was 80% yeah. Caucasian kids. Yeah. And it was the first concert I'd ever been to that it at least wasn't a 50-50, right? I know the transition had been coming, but um, that's part of it. Yeah. The other part, uh, people who are connected to farming in some regard, uh, whether it's a raised bed garden like I have out here or whether it's a homestead farm right. or people in the commercial ag industry. Right. With that crossover, you're going to see things. And then, of course, people that enjoy fine spirits and uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a I wide mean, demographic. So. You, you'd be surprised. Like, you know, a lot of people don't realize how much they have in common, you know what I'm saying, um, with each other. And, you know, like you said, to answer your question, you know, like, like try to appeal to and it's, I, I, I don't have a certain crowd I try to, you know, appeal to, you know. I just, hey, I, I'm Burt's, uh, I'm about peace and love. I smoke hella weed, I drink, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, you are, if you're a farmer, I'm assuming you're gonna rock with me because I smoke weed. I have lots of growing questions for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, everybody, I, if you ask me, everybody drink. You either a weed smoker or you're a drinker. I don't believe when nobody say, I don't smoke weed or or I don't drink. Okay, then you're doing hard drugs. <laughs> Ain't nobody living in 2021 surviving a pandemic without no weed or without drinking or without both. And if they tell you not, walk away because they doing some other shit that you don't want to be doing with them. They go to the darker arts. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, and even if you come to my shows, you know, you would, and please forgive me, but you know what I'm saying? This is how my, my homies is back home in Chicago. Speak. You know, they come to the shows, they be like, hey, birds, man, all these white people here to see you. I'm like, <laughs> Right, bro. Like, like, oh, yeah. It's music, bro. Like you know what I'm saying. So it, 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 you you can like you said you meet somebody who's a, who's a farmer and you would never know they're probably listening to something like Two Chains or Drake. You know, just, you just can't judge off you know what I'm saying what a person does that makes them happy. You know what I'm saying what they choose to do for a hobby. Absolutely. You know, we all got brains. We all have choices to be open minded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Some people take the opportunity. Some people yeah. don't. So. You know, I, regardless of your background, I think music is that one thing that can bring people together. Niggas don't dream no more. Yeah. Couple pair of J's, I see niggas go broke. Go. Faith don't exist when a nigga hood famous. Ignorance is so contagious. Then again, it's entertaining. No Lord. How do you stay up on music? And who do, who are you listening to? Or are you the opposite where you just shut out all the external and just go with what's in your head? Uh... I get told I should listen and stay in tune a lot more than I should. <laughs> I do uh, tune out, and that's just because, in my opinion, like most of the stuff now is not even about music no more. I don't care who shot who. I don't care who said what. I don't care who tweet about what. And that's mostly what it is nowadays when you're trying to in tune. It's, like it's a lot more acting than, than, than dropping music now. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. When we was coming up, you know what I'm saying? That was the biggest thing we looked forward to was an album, an artist dropping a new project. 
you know, we was rushing, you know, all these things changed, but like, yeah, we rushed to the stores when the CDs drop, you know, things like that, uh, you know, try to get it off the line. And back then, artists was consistent with their drops too. Now you get artists, they'll drop an album, they'll disappear, you know, become a politician, stay in drama, come back, drop another album. So that is automatic turn off for me. Um, you know, I just, I probably listen to a lot more underground than up and coming than mainstream. And, and I guess with me, it's just because the mainstream artist is like, you know, I'll catch it when I hear it, but it's, it's like NBA players. It's like college basketball players. They play their hearts out. Right. They get to the NBA, they get rich. I'm not saying they're not they're good they're anymore, rich. they're not that best, but you, you can tell that drive, they're not that same person no more. And the same with these music artists, they come in, they hungry. You know what I'm saying? When they first breaking through, they, we love them because of the energy and the consistency they give us. And then fame comes, you know? Something I don't understand yet, you know what I'm saying? But I, 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 that's why I pray, you know, I keep good people around me, you know what I'm saying, to keep me, to keep me grounded. But, you know, people get a taste of the fame and, you know what I'm saying, they get the money and they forget their job. They forget their job, bro. Well, they forget who they are and where they came from. Yeah, right? I like, mean. How do you, you know, you're on your 100 foot yacht. How are you going to rap about life in the streets? Yeah. I assume there's not a 100 foot yacht in the streets. Yeah. It's it's tough to stay connected if yeah. you grow as a person unless you're spending time there. That's why I think it's, I think if any artist in the game should have something just to keep them grounded, like me personally, uh, I have a whole like collection, like whole folder of just screenshots. Every time someone comments on my social media or on my YouTube or blog, or whatever, you know, hey, you inspire me, hey, you this and that, I screenshot it. Because a lot of time, and I can see why a lot of artists get the way they get, you know. When I get to those moments where that artificial life is kind of like sinking in a little too much, I gotta humble myself. So I gotta go back and remind myself what I was doing it for. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of artists forget that. Like, you know what I'm saying? They hit a certain level, you know what I'm saying, of fame. And they forget how many people they, they actually say, how many people they actually inspire, you know what I'm saying? Man, it just becomes a whole runway show, if you ask me. Who looked yeah. the flyers? Who slamming who chick? Like, who? That's, that's one thing I hate about it. Oh, slamming his chick. Well, bro, somebody slamming your <laughs> chick. Like, no, okay, it's a right. circle. Like, I, I want to get back to the point with music, especially hip hop, where we bragging and we talking about something that's worth bragging and talking Knowledge, about. Knowledge, intelligence, exactly. legacy. Yeah. Exactly, no, bro. That's the stuff I, I navigate toward. You know, it's, it's good for a, a head nodder every now and again, but you find that deeper meaning and it really touches. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk a little bit about influence. Um, I know we talked a little bit about your upbringing, and uh, I'm sure there's some influence there, but outside of music, what are, what are some uh, influences that you go to or that stay with you? <clears throat> my surroundings. I would definitely say I'm one of those, but my surroundings. It's my biggest influence. I never had celebrity influence. Like, I never had, like, I had rappers that, you know, I admire, you know what I'm saying, listen to a lot and respect, but I can't say that all oh, they influenced me, you know, made me wanna, you know, people like my mom, like my sister, um, seeing them set goals and accomplishments, my, my father, my little brother, my team, uh, you know, that, those, those are, you know, those are my biggest influencers. I mean, when you actually know somebody and a personal situation and you see them overcome that, like just every time, I'm gonna set this goal and they just beating the fuck out that goal every time, yeah. like no match. That's the drive I need, you know what I'm saying? That's that, like, oh, I see you. Like, okay, let me let me get my success going. Yeah. Like, you know, versus I, I just can't, it's hard for somebody who's already, in my eyes, quote unquote, established to influence me. You know, it's, okay, hey, congrats, you did it, and now we're trying to get ours. So, yeah. nothing you do is is inspiring me to go twice as hard. I'm sorry, it's not, because, you know. You, you set your own pace. Yeah, you, you already, yeah, I'm trying to get that. to where you at. So, you know what I'm saying? So, definitely, mine is, is within the ones that's around me. I know you said you don't get influenced by performers per se, but was there anything like you saw that one concert or you saw that one guy and you knew I wanted to be like him? I wanted Bone to Thugs and Harmony. Okay. The first time, my first concert ever, too. So now it was my first concert ever, and it was for one of my favorite, you know what I'm saying? Where was it at? Do you remember? Rap crew at the time. I can't remember what. It was in Chicago. 
I can't remember what venue. Um, I remember a lot of those sickest. concert details get fuzzy. I don't know Bruh, why. It was the, <laughs> I just remember my sister and her friends were going. It was one of those situations where, you know, they do like everyone that knew me at the time when I was young, that's like Mom Thugs and Harmony was just like those are my dudes, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. I want to be in Bone Thugs of Harmony. I want to get signed, but I was like, they just had a style that was just dope to me. So uh, you know, my sister ended up being a, the dopest big sister. She always been in my life. Uh, she ended up taking me, and I remember just seeing them crazy bone. He had, he didn't even had his hair in the fro at the time. He had a he had a big old knife on stage. <laughs> his hair was laid down like he had a, like a perm or something. And you know, uh, Lazy Bone, he had his hair out in the front, the rest of them had their hairs out in the fro. And, and I remember just sitting there, uh, one of my sister's friends, he had me like on his shoulders. So I remember just sitting there looking, and I remember lock, locking in with Crazy Bone. He was just rapping, he was just looking dead, dead. And I just felt my heart pumping. I was just like, oh no, I was like, yeah, this is it. Because at that time in my head, I was like, I could do that. I can eat this motherfucker up right now. I can do it. And it was that concert, that moment where it was just like, y'all, I got home and. Started writing? Or had you been writing before that? Like, no, man, yeah. Yeah. Like, but it was like intense at that time. It was just like, okay, this shit was fun, but I was like, nah, this shit is like, again, at a young age, not knowing what drug was. She was like, drug. It was yeah. just like, it was a rush. She was like, man, that felt good. So I'm a big uh, believer in like influential moments. And I don't think oftentimes you can be in the moment and realize it's it's influencing you like yeah. it happened here. But you look back. Yeah, that's that's where this idea came from. And it evolved. And like that was where I knew at that point. But you know what? I think those moments are still there. I think people just take those moments for gr uh, for granted, you know? I mean, I put it to you this way, uh, you know, I went, I had a show in Fort Wayne, uh, not Fort Wayne, uh, another another event I did before Fort Wayne, and so I was like, man, you ain't, I heard it was lit, like, you ain't go live, share videos and pictures, and I was in a moment. I didn't care about who saw this shit, yeah. like, I saw it, you know, and it just, like, going back to my first console, Bone Thugs Harmony, it's, I got to enjoy that moment and remember that moment because I actually enjoyed it. I wasn't spending time trying to show someone else my moment. You know what I'm saying? When you have a moment, you ain't thinking about sharing anything. You lost, you living in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think those moments are still there. I think people just need to be a little bit more, you know what I'm saying, open, <laughs> you know, when, when those moments happen and, and actually embrace it because sometimes it's not meant to be shared. Fair enough. All right, so here's here's the uh, most engaging segment that uh, our fans are gonna love. We're hoping, and uh, what it is is hard hitters and wig splitters. We're gonna uh, rapid fire uh, and give you a chance to answer questions that uh, you know are at the hearts and wills of uh, our audience. So okay. Um, think quickly, top of your head, don't think too much into this. Okay. Uh, hopefully it's fun, hopefully it tells us a little bit about you and uh, represents a little bit about uh, hip hop, Chicago, all that. So. Okay. All right. Beef or no beef? Beef. Cash or Queens? Queens. Big black truck or 6-4? Big black truck. Edibles or flour? Both. Both. I like it. <laughs> Tupac or Biggie? Pop. Bears or Colts? Bears. Nice. As painful as it is, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> it is very painful. <laughs> Chicago or nothing, unfortunately. But, uh, nice. Nike or Champion? Nike. Cubs or Sox? Cubs. I'm going to get beat up for that, by the way. I'm from the south side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you finna give me jumped as soon as I touch back down. I tell you, you know, when I was living in the city as a single guy, you get asked that question, I'd always answer it bears. Bro, <laughs> man, you better off being a gang member. Yeah. Cubs and white, <laughs> Cubs uh, and white socks. Well, Blue. <laughs> it's, it's been nice knowing you, bro. It's <laughs> fuck. You be whack out here. All right. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. <laughs> Ketchup or no ketchup? No ketchup. Hot or mild? Hot. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. Ellen or Oprah? <laughs> Oprah. Marvel or DC? 
DC. Bezos or Musk? Musk. Jardinier or Jardinera? Jardinier. All right, wrapping it up, vanilla or chocolate? Are you talking about women? <laughs> I'm talking about whatever you want. All right, go. go. And now we're gonna do a little uh, gardening, and uh, you got a, got a chance to be documented for our Ask a Soil Scientist segment. You okay. said you mentioned things about dirt, but uh, what we're gonna do is leave you with a little parting gift, and uh, you've selected the green jalapeno. So uh, one, two, three cups for your, for you and your guys. And uh, we're just gonna fill these up, push some seeds in. I'll get the uh, squirt can. And uh, you can go to town. And you'll have to, of course, report on the growth as these grow at... Uh... Is that enough? Did I do that right? Yeah, fill it up. Go ahead, okay. there's no... Well, you I'll put that up on the top. So when you do this right here, it's cool, man. Oh, uh, well. We're good for now. I don't, I don't give a lot, you know. I'm from the hood. I don't want to overstay my welcome. You get greedy. <laughs> Not at all, man. You're doing great. <laughs> all right. And uh, so here, these are uh, green jalapeno seeds that we saved from last year. Go ahead and pull those out. So you can just grab a handful in each cup, push them down about a quarter of an inch, and we'll give those a spray. Hey, look, Mama, I'm planting something legal. <laughs> Yeah, you can carry these across state lines with no trouble. I'm good, so I just, I just do it like that. Just yeah, no, that's perfect. <clears throat> this is what I love about gardening, is like there's that. literally no way you can mess this up. You uh, put it in dirt, keep it moist, and... Uh, uh, basically, you said, if I mess this up, something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so keep wrong it with it. All right, and make sure that's nice and moist without tipping it like I almost did. Is that too tight? Here. Yeah, they're setting off these jokes, bro. I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> trying to be professional. <laughs> there we go. There, there, there it is. Now let's uh, let's push those down a little bit. What do we got here? Perfect. Get those under the ground and give it uh, seven to fourteen days. I'd do some daily sprinkles on this. Okay. And uh, before long, you'll have. Uh, I'll show you what success will look like here. You'll have something pop up like that. Okay, right on. And uh, yeah, then when these get too big, you can transfer them into either a bigger pot like this or into the ground somewhere. Right. Uh, full sun for peppers. And uh, you know, two and a half months or so, you'll be getting some of the most delicious peppers, hot peppers I'm out of the ground that you'll ever have. So I'm all for it. That is uh, much appreciation, man. I appreciate man. you coming out. Thank you. I had a lot of fun talking to you and learning about uh, your path as an artist and your journey and couldn't be happier that you decided to share some time with us today. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you uh, for having me. Uh, like I said, y'all stay in tune with the kid. That's Constant L. Burst. C-O-N-S-T-A-N-T. -T. Google me. Oh!